Hey guys, welcome again to Team Forbidden's YouTube page. I am Andrew the Collector here once again to showcase one of my deck profiles. And I'm going to be doing a uh, deck profile for Amorphous Mages. One that I've wanted to do for so long, but I haven't really been able to find the best um, deck list for it. But I think I found one that is pretty well. So let's, for without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so for the Morph Mage monsters, we're going to start out with three Wrath. The basic structure of the Morphomages is they're basically walking, talking floodgates. They all have the same monsters effects that when they're pendulum summoned, your opponent can't special summon from the extra deck. So their main focus is on their pendulum effects, and they each do different types of floodgates. Like, for instance, Wrath means that they can't tribute cards at all except for Morphomage cards. And yeah, so that's Wrath. Then we got three Pride, which um, no effect damage whatsoever. Three Lust, no spell cards. Three Gluttony, no monster effects. Probably the best uh, Morphomage card there is, um, at least in today's meta. Um, two Greed, um, no traps. Uh, two Envy, no um, effects higher, or I mean, I'm sorry, uh, no Chain Link, two or higher. So no Solemn Strike for monster effects or anything like that. Uh, two Sloth. Um, no searching, pretty much a mistake with the body. And one Goliath, probably the second best, but I only have him at one because I'm only going to be using him for the um, Pendulum Effect, which means he's a uh, Macrocosmos, so any ca cards into the graveyard except for Morphomage cards are banished instead. And that's it for the uh, Morphomage cards. Now for the non Morphomage mo uh, Pendulum Monsters, we have two Gumgumnir and three Eccentric Archfiends. Um, I run these because, first off, Gunganir's effect is um, once per turn a Pendulum Monster can't be stored in battle, and you should all know um, Eccentric Archfiend's effect. And also, too, um, I use them because they are rank 7 and rank 1, which means it's a lot easier to get out, like, Lust, Gluttony, and Sloth, because they're 2 and he's uh, 6, and the scales only go between 5 and 3 for the Morphomage cards. So I find them really handy, and also you don't need to tribute with them at the end, uh, during each standby phase. So yeah, really good, to, especially in this deck. Keeps it live. All right, and that's it for the monsters. Now we go into the spells. Three, a Morphomage Infection. Probably the best, one of the best cards in this entire deck. It literally makes it. Uh, once per turn, um, if a Morph Mage card is tributed, destroyed by battle or by card effects, you can pretty much search. Plus, you also your Morph Mage monsters gain 100 attack for each Morph Mage card you control. So, if not for the search, it's definitely good for the power boost. Then three Morph Mage personas, um, good field spell boost. It's um, each Morph Mage card um, you control gains 300 attack and defense. Um, pretty hands off, but also if um, twice per turn, if a Morph Mage monster is tributed, you can draw one card, and you can do that up to two per t twice per turn. So if you play your cards right, you can draw pretty much two cards. It's really good. Then run two Terraforming for the Personas, and two Pot of Riches. Um, you can either run this or Ignite Reload, but I, pref I like this better because um, you can re re recycle cards that aren't really that easy to get out like gluttony or lust or even where is it or mainly goliath since once he goes the extra deck it's very difficult to get him back but yeah that's what mainly use pot of riches for but you can run a night reload you may find it more useful than me but i prefer pot of riches all right and then we get into the traps uh, three Amorphomage Lice, or Lysis, I think, or whatever. Um, I mainly use this for the... for Because um, its first effect is that all your opponent's monsters lose 100 attack for each Amorphomage card you control. Even though it is 100, um, with the amount of mo um, cards that you can, can, can control at once, those points will add up drastically, plus with Infection and Persona. Increasing your monster's attack, it, it really adds up and makes a big difference. But I also use it for... Um, when it when a pendulum monster on your side of the f on your pendulum zone is destroyed, you can replace it with a new amorphomage card from your deck. That's one of the reasons why I run um, eccentric archfiend 
because let's say your uh, opponent has a pesky um, card on your on their side of the field that you want to get rid of, let, like let's say vanities. Put this, destroy it to pop their um, pop their card. Um, a morph mage to um, you can use uh, this to replace a, a eccentric archfiend to get a new monster in your pendulum zone. And if you're able, uh, pendulum summon the sound. Then you need her other effect to kill the another monster on their side of the field. So yeah, I, I mainly. Uh, put eccentric in here to go well with the trap card because it really does work very well especially since i'm running three but i but like i said i mostly use this for the point value and just in case they run an mst or twin twister or whatever next i run one storming and two drowning this is essential because most of the time you will find yourselves without a field of monsters and this these cards have gotten me out in more than more than one occasion that I can definitely tell. So run definitely run two drowning. I would run two storming, but I only have the one storming, so it is what it is. But yeah, definitely necessity for protection because this deck needs protection. Then we run two wiretap and two solemn warning. And, or I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, one solemn warning and one solemn strike. Um, yeah, very standard, again, with protection because this deck does need a lot of protection. And yeah, there's no extra deck because they haven't released any um, extra deck monsters for Morphin Mage. Because when they're spe Pendulum Summoned, that you neither player can summon from the extra deck except for Morphin Mage cards. But once they get their extra deck monsters, hopefully this deck will be more than broken. And yeah, that is it for the deck profile. Um, thank you so much for tuning in again. Um, if you have any comments um, or anything, be sure to leave it down below. Give it a like, share and definitely hit that subscribe button. We could definitely use it. Thank you so much for your, all your support, and we'll catch you next time.